Hi everyone, I want to take you back to where everything has started. Now I am in my high school, Roberts College, and here's my beautiful school. This beautiful school was built over one and a half centuries ago, and it's the first school that America has established other than their own grounds. And uh, of course it was in the Ottoman times and probably Istanbul was the coolest place to build a school. So they built it and luckily they have done it and we have studied in it. <laughs> And if you ask me, Refika, why did you bring us here? For two reasons. I wanted to show you my background, my life, how I came up to be me, and I want to share that with you. And secondly, because of this beautiful plant, it's called wisteria, it's actually a Chinese wisteria. Before I came to this school, I didn't know it. Like I saw it, but I wasn't in love with her. This beautiful plant, when we were in high school growing up, when we first fell in love, it, th this was the place probably we saw the other person and probably we kissed and it's this beautiful place and it has this great memory. And smell shapes my memory and my life very much, especially my cooking. And after I have graduated, I miss the smell so much. And I would like, if there was a wisteria tree somewhere, I would just follow it because it would bring up so much memories from my background. So I wanted to catch it somehow. To catch that with the flavor, I have discovered something called a wisteria shrub and it became a classic of mine. Today, I want to show you a little bit around and at the same time have a small picnic. And probably we are all kind of segregated from one another because of the COVID. So a little small picnics at this season would be great for all of us everywhere in the world. So I'm going to show you how to make a lemonade, a very nice sandwich, a vegetarian sandwich, and this wisteria shrub all in one video. And I wanted to just like give you the taste of the spring from where I grew up. To enter this school wasn't very easy. We had this national entrance exam. And in that national entrance exam, you have to be in the first 110. And here I was this girl who was good in maths and sciences, but she had this incredible dyslexia and incredible stupidity in memorizing. And there would be dates, there would be like things in Turkish literature that I would never be able to memorize. But somehow God helped. I remember even a day before the exam, my father was trying to teach me some things and he then realized I didn't know the alphabet. Man who thought that her girl would enter a very good school, but here she was, who didn't know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Somehow I was able to get in. The first year was about just learning English. In the whole school, they were my teacher, Mrs. Atai. She said one day that I'm not worried that anyone would fail, but you. <laughs> So anyways, I didn't, uh, I passed luckily and somehow came to these days. These three people are graduates from this school. What did they do for Turkey? Nejat Eczacıbaşı established the biggest pharmaceutical company in Turkey and then many more things. Suna Kraç, as she was the daughter of Koç family, and she has an incredible effort in building Archedic, one of the biggest brands in Turkey, who does the white goods, who are really good in research and development. Feyaz Berker as well, he was an entrepreneur for his time and he established many, many things. So we can really, really say this school helped to build this country in so many terms. And how did it do it? It was able to do it by educating, giving such a vision in this beautiful heaven-like place, a lot of things to his, her students, and then those people help to change and make this country, world, a better place. What I want to tell you is how this uh, school was established and why. The Ottoman Empire was such an interesting place. At the time, there was nothing called nationalism. So what was your blood color? What was your origin was not important. The Sarai was ruled together with its 
parts and everyone had its place. For example, when Fatih conquered Istanbul and Muslims were getting in to balance that, he also brought Greeks, Jewish people and Christians. That was an interesting and very good spirit. And I cannot say in all the Ottoman Empire, all the sultans were same and everything was super. But I can say there was a different kind of existence, regardless of your religion, regardless of your origin, another system was able to live. And this school and the first graduates were actually people like that. And especially my school was like the girls' school. It was American College for Girls. And one of the first graduates, Halide Edip Aduhar, was really the exemplary for a Turkish lady. She fought in the fight for freedom beside Atatürk. And also something that I've recently learned that I didn't know, Atatürk once was married and he had this incredible vision. He was one of the first people and Turkey was one of the first countries who gave women rights to be equal and to also vote. This was back in 1920s, early 30s. So with that vision, he found someone that would be great with him. And he kind of fell in love with her cleverness and mind as well. And she was called Letifa Hanım. And I recently learned, although she was from Izmir, she was also an Robert College graduate. And you might wonder where I am. And I'm kind of further away from the school. To be able to enter this school, I gain some weight. As you can understand, if I focus on something, I gain weight. And then here is the place where I lost my weight because I was able to make great spots. Also, where am I walking? And I'm walking with this for a picnic. And we're going to have a picnic with Bahar. And I want you to see the view. This is the view of that running field. And it's the beautiful Bosphorus. This is springtime in Istanbul. It's when the nature really blossoms. You would hear the smell of the grass, the daisies, everything. First the wisteria, then chestnut trees and then acacia trees and then linden and the fresh linden smells like heaven on earth now what are we going to eat our thing is very simple bahar it's okay it's a wrap but what i do i keep my wraps in a jar so that it keeps it much cooler for a longer time and keeps it tidy. And this is... Mm, we have this thing called mm. Nohut Durum. Mm. Especially for you. Mm. Amazing. And homemade lemonade. This is good memories. Is this hummus in it? There's hummus, there's pickles and many more. And I'll give you this recipe very soon. Bahar has this story that she was a very bright student but rebellious mm, <laughs> after she came and see this place she was angry at her and i live very mom. close by <laughs> she was living in a walking distance that her mom didn't put pressure on her yeah nice huh very delicious This is a very, very, very big elderflower tree and it's great. And the technique that I'm going to show you how to make syrup, you can make also an elderflower syrup. And Istanbul is such a great place. Just from your car, you can just pick up an elderflower. Amazing. Now let's start making the lemonade. To start with, I need five lemons actually. This is from the garden, the others are not. But one thing which is really important is sometimes for the lemon to not to go bad very fast, they put something like a wax. Actually, there are like special wraps with wax on it. Sometimes you find the lemons sold in paper wraps. And to understand it, you should do that or with your finger. If some wax is coming, it's, it won't be a good lemonade because it will be waxed. The taste of the lemonade doesn't come from the juice, it comes from the skin. And first I'm going to use five lemons. I'm going to zest the lemon. What I have to do is, first you know there is this yellow part. If you do it excessively, then you reach the white part like this. 
and the white part is bitter and the bitterness is not great so we want the yellow parts like this and the zester is the finest one we sell this as well in etsy but if you have a zester you can use it don't press it heavily just let it slide can i peel the lemon and then shred it in? no because you cannot peel it that thin and the fifth one, I'm going to use the one from my garden, which is greener. It's going to change the color a bit, but this is heaven. This is five lemon peels. And to this, I'm going to add some sugar. If you want a grown up lemonade, three tablespoons is great. If there are kids as well, use four or five tablespoons. I just use four because my nephews are coming and especially one of them is a great fan of lemonade so i'm making this for him one thing if you don't want to use sugar but honey you can use it just beat the zest really well and then add the honey with a bit of water and let it sit for a while the taste is going to be quite similar but there will also be from whatever the honey is from if it's from flour, it, it will also have a flowery taste, which is very good as well. But I wanted to show you the classic one. And in Turkey, if you go to pastry shops, lemonade is very famous. Before Coca-Cola was in the picture, what was drunk was lemonade. And this becomes that lemonade. We have to beat the sugar and the zest until this sound disappears. I am beating this with a wooden spoon so that the beating is easier, but you can use any kind of spoon, doesn't matter. You can do this immediately, but if this stays overnight, the taste multiplies and it becomes great. I have it from, not yesterday, but from this morning. I'm just going to add a bit of this so that the green one also is in the picture. And now it's time to add the lemon juice. First, I'm rubbing the lemons. It's easier to... Get the juices out this way. As you can see, it becomes much easier like this. And I add the juice. Okay, now shake it so well so that all the taste merges. And then half a liter of water. Another half a liter of water, totally one liters. And at this point, if you're doing this immediately, your sugar might not melt. So you have to mix it until it melts totally. And after it does, now it's time to filter or sieve. I'm going to have a better English promise after the summer. Now this part, what is left over is the best part with the greatest taste so I have to squeeze it so well that I use all of it okay done you can use this in a cake it will be really good and I want to put some ice so that we can taste it immediately now it's already Allah This is for me with a lot of ice and not so sugary. Who likes it with more sugar? Okay. You can add some mint, but before you add it, squeeze it with your hands like this. And the smell starts to be stronger and then add it to your lemonade. Now this one is for Bahar. The ice. I'm going to put a lot of ice because she doesn't like it very sweet. And her Melissa. Rubbing it and putting it. And here. Ta da! Done. Guys, would you like to have it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Brack now moved to his new house. To that. Cheers <laughs> yeah, huh? to that. Mm. I want some of Right here, right, huh? right now. We all want <laughs> summer right here, right now. Now it's Durum time. Now, for the wrap, I'm going to make a hummus. But you know, we have the greatest hummus recipe here on the channel. And if you're a hummus fan, please go and do it. But this is going to be a fast one. I want to show you how to make hummus without using the food processor and in like two minutes. And here I have a pack of chickpeas and I'm going to use 
half of it for each wrap. I'm just like taking the aquafaba out, chickpeas here. I'm going to add a bit of salt. I'm going to add one garlic. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to beat these two together. This time I don't like take the skins off. If you don't have a pestle and mortar, what you can do, I have a video, use a plastic bag and beat it with something heavy on it and it works marvelously now i beated the chickpeas and it's very creamy right now if we take the skins off it will take another minute but the taste will be slightly better but with this i want it to be as practical as possible so to that i'm going to oh add you normally add three tablespoons but now three tablespoons of tahini about two tablespoons of lemon what lemon will do is harden the mixture and to this i'm going to add some water which is about two tablespoons and some olive oil and here we have an easy hummus it's a bit chunky it's not as pure i like what matters is the taste if you do this in a plastic bag it will be even smoother now I'm going to add this hummus to the middle like this. So this, what's going to be great is going to be pickles. So I have one gherkin here and to the middle like this. I'm going to add some chickpeas. I'm going to have two wraps like this. Red pepper, cayenne and sumac. You can use a bit of lemon instead of sumac and a bit of red pepper as well. Sumac is a great spice. If you get a hold of it, that would be wonderful and a lot of greens here i have parsley but if you have something else you can use corianders for example just plain like this or just lettuce would do but a lot of it now fold the sides and then wrap it like this Ta -da -da -da. Mm. Of course, the quality of the tahini matters a lot, and this is great. If you don't have tahini in your country, you can use ours. We also sell it on Etsy as well, and this is done by Turkish women, and it's women power, and it's great. And inside, it's like this. Mm. This is the wrap, this is the lemonade. Now, let's come to a controversial topic, which is whether we can make wisteria syrup or not. Some people say wisteria is very poisonous and you shouldn't make something out of it, especially Chinese wisteria. And some people do it simply. And a friend of mine, Mehfesh, makes liqueur out of it, which is great. For years, we've been making wisteria syrup in two ways. And I want to tell you, how we make it. First of all, what we do is we get our wisterias, you dip them in water and take it out. Let it sit in the drinking water for three days. And then we take the wisteria out. We add the same amount of sugar. If it's like a cup of water, a cup of sugar. We mix it really well and we can them. And then we put the cans into hot boiling water. We do it for X minutes. Now I forgot how many minutes it was. And then we get the syrup and it's very, very good. By the way, you can do not just wisteria, but now it's the season for elderflower and you can do elderflower syrup and you can mix it even with champagne. A friend of mine in Shirinje, she mixes it up with champagne and that's how what she serves for the newcomers to her hotel and it's great and if you want a simpler way of making syrup just clean it with water and then put a layer of wisteria a bit of sugar a layer of wisteria a bit of sugar and drizzle of few lemon drops on top of each other and now it's ready to rest i wanted to make it look better for you guys so i made it in a bigger jar but what i'm going to do is to put it in a smaller one like this
and then put it in somewhere which you can see direct sunlight let it sit for two days shake it time to time the sugar is going to melt and it will be a bit watery when you wash the wisteria there's also water on it so they mix and some water is out so see the leaves and then you're left with a great tasting and smelling water put it in the refrigerator and it will be fresh drink by adding water on it for a month and a month and a half later on the taste starts to dissolve and also while you're drinking syrups of flowers the taste comes from the smell like we are in love with the smell we're not in love with the taste so what we should do is when you're drinking don't drink it as you drink your lemonade what you should do is have a bit of water have the drink also have air inside so that the taste bud with the air it goes to your nose and the taste comes from the nose there are still discussions about whether wisteria is poisonous or not so be careful we have been doing this for years and it's almost like a tradition so i wanted to share it with you but i didn't want to make it like the whole episode about it i just wanted to tell you how we do it and you can do it in different for different flowers and that's it for now take great care and uh, we love you. There's a bonus of the video and someone is going to give a recipe. When you collect these flowers, any kind of beautiful flowers, what you can do, you can put them in the ice cube boxes and freeze them. And then put those ice cubes with flowers into your champagne or into your drinks or in whatever you want and they look perfect. Who is the alcoholic here? <laughs> Bye, guys!